Long has a debate raged over the topic of foresight. Some say that knowing the time and manner of death would be advisable, as they could make peace and live what life they do have to the fullest before their end. Others, though, would feel such knowledge as an inescapable cloud looming over their heads for their entire lives. Most adults would surely crack under such pressure, let alone children, but in the world of A Song of Ice and Fire, a young green dreamer displayed mental and emotional fortitude worthy of legend. This man, or rather, boy, was Jojen Reed. Hello everyone, and welcome back to Exploring Fiction. The son of Ned Stark's greatest ally and a recipient of green dreams, Jojen Reed knew what day he would die, yet he persevered in his aid of a crippled wolf despite the eventuality it would cause. Already uncanny because of his nature as a chronogman, Jojen was even more secluded due to his prophetic powers, which existed both as a blessing and a curse. He carried arcane and predictive knowledge with him wherever he went, leaving him stoic and sullen beyond his years. With every move he made, he marched straight toward his own doom, but he bore the burden nobly and thought not of himself, but of the greater good. Fully grown and heroic men suffered less and complained more than Jojen Reed who instead sought only to fulfill his purpose. So, who exactly is Jojen Reed, and why is he such an interesting character? Let's explore. Jojen Reed was born to Lord Howland Reed and his wife Gianna in 286 AC at Greywater Watch. He was the only son of the pair, but not an only child as he had a slightly older sister, Mira. At a young age, Jojen fell near mortally ill with grey water fever, and as he lay rotting amidst the bedsheets, he was visited in a dream by a three-eyed crow. This ethereal beast bestowed upon him the gift, or curse, of green sight, allowing Jojen to dream of events yet to occur in the real world. Though Jojen obtained the gift of green sight, he was no true green seer, as the abilities of warging and communicating with weirwood trees evaded him. Nevertheless, what powers he did have proved vital, and his father Howland recognized them as such. One dream Jojen experienced meant far more than the others, and in this dream, he saw the three eyed crow attempting to free a winged wolf from its stone chains. When Jojen relayed the events of the vision to his father, Howland sent both him and his sister to Winterfell, evidently espying the importance of this premonition. By the time he began his trek northward, Jojen Reed looked the part of a typical chronogman and more. He was short and slight of build, with cavernous green eyes. His garb was entirely green to match, though he let his sister Mira carry the weapons. Jojen was subdued and mature far beyond his adolescent years, surely the result of being exposed to the unalterable, harsh truths of life. It is at the stronghold of Winterfell in which Jojen Reed first appears in A Song of Ice and Fire, specifically in the second volume, A Clash of Kings. Along with his sister Mira, he arrives at the height of the Harvest Feast, pledging the service of House Reed to House Stark, and their new King Rob. As the young wolf is fighting a war, Bran Stark hears their oaths instead and despite the commotion taking place around him, Jojen requests to meet the direwolves of the Stark family, and although he is warned against it, he introduces himself to Summer. 
while the other lords, ladies, and occupants of the north meander back to their own homes after the feast. Jojen and Mira Reed remain at Winterfell, where they grow closer to Bran. Jojen quickly gains the reputation of being subdued beyond his years, and Mira reveals to Bran the truth of Jojen's mysterious power. The Green Dreamer interrogates Bran about his own dreams, prompting the young boy's irritation and also the wrath of both Summer and Shaggy Dog. Still, Jojen remains calm and collected, as he knows his day of death remains in the future. As the War of the Five Kings begins to take full effect, the truth of Jojen's dreams is revealed further with each passing day, and soon Bran begins to heartily believe in the Kronogman's power. They discuss Jojen's premonition of the sea engulfing Winterfell, and Bran is, of course, confused. Still, Jojen is adamant that his vision will come to pass. It is in their escalated discussions about green dreaming that Bran learns that he is actually a warg, though Jojen suggests he hide his ability so as to avoid the scorn and suspicion of regular folk. Soon, Sir Roderick Castle returns to Winterfell with the prisoner Reek in tow, and again Jojen has a mysterious answer for another strange situation. He explains that he has seen the bodies of Bran and Rickon being skinned at the prisoner's feet, and while Mira offers to kill the filthy man, Jojen advises her that she would fail in the attempt. And just as his dream of the sea flooding Winterfell predicted, Jojen watches in horror as Theon Greyjoy and his Ironborn vault over the walls of the castle and take it over from within, killing many of Winterfell's residents. Bran, Jojen, and Mira are all taken captive, but along with Rickon and the Direwolves, make their escape with the aid of Osha and Hodor. After a fruitless chase, Theon and Reek, who has joined up with the Turncloak, present a farce to the remaining residents of Winterfell, displaying the flayed bodies of two sons of a local miller as Bran and Rickon, again, just as Jojen foresaw. Once the red wave of House Bolton had swept its way out of Winterfell, Jojen emerges from his hiding place in the crypt along with the others, and after consulting with Osha and a dying Meister Lewin, helps in determining that Bran and Rickon should be split up. Osha agrees to take Rickon with her south, and Jojen advises that he has seen that the best course for himself, Mira, Hodor, and Bran is to go even farther north. And so, the small band sets out, in pursuit of an unknown end and full of hopeful trepidation. In A Storm of Swords, Jojen continues northward with the rest of the ragtag band, intent on leading Bran toward the murky freedom he's seen in his dreams. Bran begins to inhabit the body of Summer more often, embracing his warging abilities, but Jojen warns him against allowing them to encompass him fully. With Mira's aid, Jojen convinces the young Lord Stark resolutely that they must journey farther north than they'd ever imagined, so that they may find the Three-Eyed Crow who can help Bran to break free from his mortal bonds and learn to fly. The trek is arduous and hardly encouraging, especially since Jojen insists on staying away from the roads so as to avoid the running mouths of strangers. But eventually the company pauses at a small dilapidated village in the new gift. Here they find respite from a brewing storm in the Tower of Queen's Crown, and while nestled away at the pinnacle of the building, Bran wargs into summer. As the wolf, he charges into a fray of wildlings below, and aids in Jon Snow's escape, who had previously been entrenched with the men from beyond the wall. Though Jon doesn't fully understand the implications of this interaction, he takes advantage of the commotion and returns once more to the Night's Watch, while Jojen, 
Bran, and the others are forced to stay the night in the tower until the wildlings are far removed from the site. Unimpeded the rest of the way, except by their own fears and deficiencies, Jojen, Mira, Bran, and Hodor finally reach the Night Fort, a castle on the wall and one of the places Jojen saw in his dreams. Despite searching and probing the place, they are unsure of how to cross out into the great beyond, and so settle for the night in the abandoned kitchens to keep warm. In the dead of night, they hear footsteps in a castle that has sat vacant for years, and from within a well in the kitchen emerges the portly Samwell Tarly, along with Gilly the wildling woman and her baby son. Sam, ever the helpful individual, reveals that the terrifying figure called Cold Hands escorted both him and Gilly to the wall and showed them the secret passage out of which he's just emerged, and explains that the cloaked figure is searching for Bran. As only a member of the Night's Watch can open the Black Gate to trek beyond the wall, Sam escorts the ragged party through the secret passage and out into the harsh world north of Westeros. While Jojen Reed is absent from A Feast for Crows, he is present once more in A Dance with Dragons. He, along with the same familiar group, now led by Cold Hands, continues the journey north, though with each passing day, he becomes even more dour than before. The band sits astride Coldhand's great elk, but struggles to find food and shelter in a place akin to hell frozen over. The children ultimately determine that their new shrouded protector is not alive, though obviously he is not quite dead either. Jojen himself grows weaker with each passing day, but still he pushes on, defiantly stating he has yet to meet his day of death. But with each step forward, each step further away from the land he calls home, Jojen wilts like a flower in the changing seasons, hardly replenished by the hearty meal of elk meat resulting from the death of Coldhand's steed. Finally, in the blistering cold before them sits the Cave of the Three-Eyed Crow, and as Cold Hands, Hodor, and the children scramble up the slope, a band of whites spring forth in an ambush. Cold Hands and Mira stave them off, along with Bran warging Hodor, and with the help of Leaf, one of the children of the forest, the group makes its way safely into the Three Eyed Crow's cave. For months, Bran studies under the tutelage of the warped, ancient Three Eyed Crow learning to become a green seer, while he, Hodor, Jojen, and Mira are taken care of by the children of the forest. However, it is Jojen that suffers the most out of all who made the trek from Winterfell. His somber attitude has become a full depression, and he often wanders the cave alone, yearning for home and becoming resigned to his eventual fate which only he truly understands. Once Bran is fed the weirwood paste by the three-eyed crow, and finally sees through the eyes and mind of the Winterfell heart tree for the first time, he returns with Hodor to their sleeping chamber, feeling as though he has for once done something of merit, but neither Mira nor Jojen are present to celebrate. An old man in all but physicality, Jojen Reed carries a burden sought by some and repulsed by others. He knows the day he will die. He cannot change it. He cannot avoid it. But he must live with it. The knowledge matures him far beyond his years and saps him of the giddy, gleeful innocence of childhood. Instead, Jojen sees his life only as a path toward accomplishing what tasks he can for those about which he cares. His prophetic dreams draw him and his sister to Winterfell, where the young cripple Bran Stark yearns to leap from his mortal bonds and fly. 
Jojen takes it upon himself to shepherd Bran to his destination and toward the one who can teach him to access his powers in full. Yet, the sullen Kernogman seems to sense with every step, he draws closer to his own demise. It is, of course, inevitable, merely by the existence of time itself, but rather than turn away or run from his fate, Jojen embraces it. He pushes instead toward it, immersing himself in his quest to block the thoughts of mortality that are surely in his periphery at all times. With the stoic weight of the knowledge that he is inching ever closer to the end of his life atop his shoulders, Jojen insists to Mira and Bran that they push forward to find the Three-Eyed Crow, despite all the danger that awaits them. Every time he encounters a threat, he does not proudly boast that his death is not imminent, but says so only loud enough for those he cares about to hear. He takes no great solace that his time has not run out, but simply returns his focus back toward delivering Bran to the Three-Eyed Crow. And when the company finally reaches the hidden cave far beyond the wall, he grows even more weary and depressed. While Bran begins to blossom, Jojen starts to wilt, and though speculation, hints, and theories have run amok as to his current whereabouts and status, it is undeniable that Jojen's death is near. At any point, he could have turned back. He could have run away, and none would have blamed him, for if they were staring their own death straight in the face, they would have done the same. Yet, Jojen Reed instead quietly shoulders the burden, embracing it and accepting the upcoming end to his young life. The uncanny abilities and elements in the world of A Song of Ice and Fire usually existed to highlight traits and qualities of certain characters, thus reflecting themes and ideas about life itself. The Green Dreams of Jojen Reed were one such example, a power placed upon a youth who learned very quickly the fickle nature of human life. Jojen set aside his own ambitions and misgivings to aid others and to attempt to bring about some good in the world, even though he knew it would result in his own death. He showed bravery and resolve beyond his years, an admirable yet somber individual amidst the backdrop of the ever-darkening Westeros. With his blazing green eyes set northward, and his heart sunken inside his chest, Jojen Reed began his march to condemnation. So, that's all for this video. Leave a comment with your thoughts, I'd love to hear them. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and subscribe if you're new here, I'd love to have you. Visit my website, russellawellsauthor.com, for exclusive fiction, reviews, and more. And sign up for my mailing list for free, exclusive content. The links for both are in the description below. And, like always, I will see you next time.